Hey guys! In our last videos, we delved into the exciting world of prototypes featuring variables. Let's step back to explore the classic realm of prototypes, focusing on the art of incorporating transition effects into elements. We will add a touch of elegance to our destinations that guarantees a seamless transition, creating a captivating card shuffling effect. We will also add an illuminating glow effect to our icons and an engaging button interaction. We will introduce you with interactive components featuring variants. It will enable you to design prototype interactions among different variants within a component set, ultimately saving you time. We're going to create an engaging tab bar animation that will add a delightful and seamless transition to our design. We'll add scrollable and sticky elements to our prototype and we will enhance our status bar with a captivating glass effect. With everything correctly configured, we'll start establishing connections between the first three screens as they are navigated through the tab bar. The remaining screens will involve navigation by tapping on specific buttons. Get ready to enhance your prototyping skills and create captivating user experiences. We'll start by creating the interactive components directly from the components set according to each element of our design, such as icon, tab bar, cards, scrolling content, and finish by combining the transitions in sequence. But before we get started, let me introduce you to interactive components with variants. Interactive components allow you to create prototype interactions between variants in a component set. Anytime you add an instance to your designs, those interactions are set up and ready to go. This saves you time when creating prototypes and prevents unnecessary noodle soup. Back to the design file, our first goal is to create an interactive component for the entire page. Let's start with the icon, which serves as the gateway to the trip application menu, offering a range of options to suit your preferences. This menu allows users to access distinct pages via the navigation bar. Observe that on the home page, the flight logo signifies the active page. Suppose we intend to transition to another option, say the stays page. In that case, the icon undergoes an expansion accompanied by an illuminating glow effect. Upon releasing the mouse, the icon elegantly returns to its original dimensions. The question arises, how do we accomplish this artful dance of interaction and animation? Let's unveil the magic together. Let's begin by using the flight icon to create our first component set. To duplicate the flight icon, simply hold down the Option key and drag it anywhere onto the canvas to initiate the creation of a new component set. Then, navigate to the diamond icon to activate the master component. Next, re-click the same button which transforms into an Add Variant option once it becomes a component. Proceed to modify the second variant. Select the rectangle layer, adjust the stroke thickness to 30, and change the layer blur strength to 50 instead. And then enlarge the text style to 50 and align it to the center. Following that, introduce an additional variant. This particular one will serve as the default icon. Conceal the rectangle layer, modifying the top color of the gradient to this color code while reducing the opacity to 30%. Incorporate a second color in the middle using this color code and set the opacity to 60% opacity. Adjust the bottom color to this color, maintaining a full opacity of 100%. Subsequently, revert the textile size back to its original value of 36 and realign it to the center. Lastly, decrease the text color intensity to 60% to achieve a secondary color effect, or you have the option to apply it from your collection of variables. Next, let's arrange the icons systematically. Employ an auto layout to ensure consistent positioning. Drag the bottom to the top and relocate the middle to the bottom. Subsequently, we'll assign clear names to avoid confusion. Begin by selecting the parent component and renaming the property to Flight. Proceed to designate the first variant as the default, followed by setting the second variant as Variant 2, and so on. Moving forward, our focus lies in the creation of interactive icons. Head over to the Prototype panel. Start by selecting the first variant, 
then drag the connection node over to the second variant. Configure the trigger as on tap, choose smart animate, and opt for a gentle transition, adjusting the duration to 400 milliseconds. Move on to variant two, drag the connection node to variant three. For this interaction, choose after delay with a delay of 10 milliseconds. We'd like the animation to trigger automatically 10 milliseconds after it's clicked. Maintain the gentle transition setting while extending the duration to 800 milliseconds. Now, let's quickly preview to see the results in action. To select the default variant directly from the component set, hold down the Option key and drag it to your desired location. Alternatively, you can also choose it from the local components. Utilize the keyboard shortcut Shift space to bring it into view and your prototype will materialize within the inline view. Great. When we click, the icon undergoes an expansion accompanied by an illuminating glow effect. Upon releasing the mouse, the icon elegantly returns to its original dimensions. Now, let's proceed to generate five more sets of components for the remaining activities. Subsequently, alter the symbols to match each specific activity. To expedite this procedure, I'll directly copy and paste from the pre-existing demo I've prepared. Ensure appropriate renaming in accordance with each topic to maintain clarity and organization. In the upcoming steps, we will seamlessly integrate the newly crafted component, replacing the previous icons within the design. Start by selecting the Life Trip frame. Navigate to the right panel and uncheck Clip Content to reveal any concealed content within the parent frame. This feature is crucial in preventing element cropping and hiding objects beyond the frame. For consistency, follow the design's order. Begin with the flight icon. Directly copy the flight icon from variant 3 in the component set and replace the old icon by right-clicking and choosing Paste to Replace. This method guarantees the preservation of the original position. You have two options. You can either copy the relevant icon from the component set and then paste it to replace the remaining old icons individually, or you can paste it directly onto all the old icons at once. To modify the icon, access the Instance panel, select the corresponding icon, and make any necessary adjustments. After making the changes, close the Clip Content option. Now let's delve into the central section of our design. Our focus here is to introduce a swipe gesture functionality to the destination cards, granting users the choice to swipe left or right through the utilization of the on-drag interaction. This interactive element not only adds a touch of elegance, but also guarantees a seamless transition, creating a captivating card shuffling effect. Here are the cards displayed on the screen, each designed to indicate various destinations. Our initial step involves crafting a dedicated component for each card. Select all the cards, navigate to the component panel, and opt for Create Multiple Components. It's crucial to assign appropriate names to each destination for clarity. Subsequently, let's create a parent frame for the cards with the dimensions of 393 by 336. Go to the asset library, locate the designated component, and insert it into the frame seamlessly. Ensure precise alignment in the center for a visually harmonious layout. Begin by duplicating the initial card and then shifting it to the left until there is a 20 unit gap between these two cards. Next, Replicate the same procedure on the right side, maintaining the consistent 20 unit spacing. Continue this duplication process until you possess a total of five cards in your arrangement. Naturally, feel free to duplicate as frequently as required to achieve your desired outcome. Choose all of the cards except for the one in the middle. Press and hold down the Shift key, then proceed to drag them downward by three pixels from the bottom. Afterward, select both the left and right cards and drag them downwards while maintaining the same gap as before. Moving forward, we will modify the card instances to correspond with distinct destinations. Beginning from the left, the first card will denote Vietnam. The second card will retain Dubai, followed by Japan at the center, then cruise, and finally, 
Paris for the last card. Apply an additional fill color using the default black shade and set the opacity to 65% on all secondary cards except for the middle card. This will create a subtle shading effect on the secondary cards, accentuating the prominence of the central main card. Duplicate the same process for the content layout. Select all the elements within it and adjust the layer opacity to 65% as well. Eliminate shadows from the secondary cards, excluding the one in the middle. This distinction will create the illusion of the primary card floating, while the surrounding cards maintain an inactive appearance. Moving forward, we'll establish a comprehensive component set from this entire frame and seamlessly integrate interactivity into it. To begin, Rename the frame as Cards. While we can eventually remove the fill color, for now, retaining it will aid in visualizing the space in relation to the frame. Additionally, you have the option to close the clip content, effectively concealing any elements that extend beyond the frame. Conversely, you can open the clip content to enhance visibility and inspection. All right, let's initiate the creation of our initial component by clicking on the diamond icon. Upon clicking, it transforms into a component and provides the choice to include a variant. You can then click on it again to incorporate a variant. Open the clip content to enhance visibility and create a bit more space between the two variants, allowing for a comfortable breathing room. Let's introduce a modification to variant two. Begin by selecting all the cards and shifting them to the left, thereby initiating a swiping gesture. Next. Adjust the position of each card accordingly. You can derive the positions from the cards in Variant 1 and simply replicate and apply those positions to the corresponding cards in Variant 2 through copy-pasting. Moving forward, we will implement a drag interaction for the cards. Commence by choosing the Japan card in Variant 1. Navigate to the prototype panel and seamlessly link the connection node to the second variant. Configure the interaction to on-drag and apply a gentle transition lasting 800 milliseconds. Subsequently, retrace your steps by dragging the connection node from variant two back to variant one with the same interactions detail. Perfect, it's time to witness the cards in motion. Let's close the fill color to make the frame transparent. First, choose variant one. While holding down the option key, drag anywhere on the canvas. Select the clip content before previewing the prototype. Transition to the prototype panel and hit the plus icon adjacent to the flow's starting point to initiate the prototype. Subsequently, click the play icon. The inline view will emerge, allowing us to put the drag gesture to the test. Simply drag the Japan card to the left and you'll observe its seamless slide accompanied by a positional shift. This is exactly what we want. All right. Let's introduce additional variants and replicate the same procedure. Start by choosing all the cards once again, then proceed to slide them to the left for the upcoming destination, which in this case is Paris. It's crucial to ensure that you reposition the cards diligently to maintain their proper arrangement. Now, proceed by dragging the connection node from the cruise card to variant three, employing the identical interaction specifications. Afterward, Take a moment to review the outcome once more. Moving forward, we'll craft the right swiping gesture in reverse by employing the same interaction technique. Choose the default variant, then click on the plus icon to introduce a fresh variant. To ensure visibility, position variant four directly above the default one. This strategic placement will prevent it from getting lost in the arrangement. Variant four is designated for executing the right swiping functionality. Highlight all the cards in variant four, then drag them to the next destination from the right-hand side. Then readjust the position of each card meticulously to make sure it matches the other cards. All right, let's implement the identical interaction using the on-drag trigger. Establish a connection by linking the node from the default variant to variant four, and subsequently connect the node from variant four back to the default variant. Let's quickly review this. Great, now let's incorporate the final variant, allowing us to swipe and reveal the last card. Starting from variant four, 
click on the plus icon to introduce the last variant. Once added, reposition it at the top once more. Proceed by repeating the identical procedure. As usual, replicate the procedure with the same trigger and transition settings. Following that, take a moment to review the outcome. With the interactive component now completed, it's time to integrate it into the design. Copy the default variant directly from the component set, and then choose the existing card frame. Right-click and opt for Paste to affect the replacement. Thoroughly examine the entire prototype. Cool! By dissecting the step-by-step -step process of implementing interactive components and variants, we've gained valuable insights into translating design concepts into functional prototypes. Next up, we'll delve into the tab bar interaction in the following section. Stay tuned. When you click on the next tab, watch in awe as the circular element gracefully glides to the adjacent tab, enhanced by a subtle luminous effect that elegantly draws attention to the symbol. Furthermore, we will also delve into the creation of scrolling content within our prototype, completing the overall user experience. Let's begin with the creation of a single tab. This state will determine the activation of an icon when clicked, alternating between true and false values. Select the initial tab and use it as the foundation for our first component. Duplicate the tab and position it anywhere on the canvas. Adjust the symbol's fill color by introducing an additional white fill with 50% opacity. Ensure that both color fills are set to overlay blending mode. Subsequently, introduce a variant. In this variant, eliminate the second fill color and the blending mode. This adjustment ensures that the default tab with overlay seamlessly integrates with the background during scrolling, adapting to the color shades. Once a tab is clicked, the symbol should transform into white against a blurred backdrop. Now select the parent frame and label the property as selected. Proceed to rename the default variant as false and the second variant as true. Begin by duplicating the new component and seamlessly replacing the existing components within the tab bar. Manually adjust each symbol as needed. For the time being, set all symbols to their default state and temporarily conceal the selected group layer. Begin by selecting the tab bar and creating a new component. Next, choose the selected group, temporarily hide the layer, and proceed to create a new variant. Focus on modifying the second tab within the tab bar. Begin by selecting the first tab, then access the Properties panel and toggle the switch to the On value. This action will mark it as an active selected tab once clicked. Introduce the third variant and ensure that the second tab is active while deactivating tab 1. Then, open the selected group layer and select the two circles within the union shape. Gently slide these elements to align properly with the next tab ensuring proper center alignment. Continue adding subsequent variants and repeating the aforementioned process, progressing until you reach the final tab. Oops, it seems I forgot to open the selected group layer within variant two, so it should be in a selected state when the icons are active. Now let's dive into the exciting realm of interactive tab bars. Access the prototype panel and pinpoint the second tab within tab bar one. Proceed by dragging the connection node directly to tab bar 3. The intention here is that when this tab is clicked, the symbol should transition into an active state. Set it to on tap with a smart animate effect and a gentle transition lasting 800 milliseconds. Once more, select the third tab from tab bar 1. This time, drag the connection node to the newly activated state. Repeat this process for the remaining tabs in the tab bar. Maintain consistency by applying the same interaction across all. Establish connections from the default state to the selected state for each tab, ensuring uniformity throughout. All right, copy the tab bar and replace the old version with the copied one. Afterward, take a moment to preview the action. By default, the tab bar remains inactive. However, when we tap on a specific tab, such as the second one, it becomes active, and when we switch to another tab, it smoothly slides to the next one. Everything is functioning perfectly. Back to the whole design, 
Now let's create the scrolling content. We'll add scrollable elements and sticky elements to our prototype to get those interactions right. Scrolling serves a crucial purpose, directing our attention to a single, defined area at any given moment. This function proves especially valuable when dealing with extensive data grids, comprising numerous rows and columns. A significant benefit of scrolling lies in its efficiency compared to clicking. Users can effortlessly navigate through extensive lists of items by merely scrolling, thus eliminating the need to click on each individual item. This time-saving approach enhances the user experience, particularly on touchscreen smart devices. All right, let's start with the icons section. Here, we don't see all the icons on one screen, making it uncomfortable. To fix this, we'll add a container to frame the scrolling content. We'll begin by adding a frame selection as clip content. This way, when you scroll horizontally, the movement will be contained within the frame. Select the menu layer, right-click, and select Frame Selection. And adjust the frame size to fit the screen, then rename it Menu. Next, select the menu frame, go to the Prototype tab, then access the Overflow Behavior section. Figma supports four different overflow behaviors, no scrolling, horizontal, vertical, and both directions. We want to be able to scroll horizontally and then select horizontal. Now play the prototype in the current view by pressing the Shift Space shortcut to open the inline view. Scroll horizontally to view the content. While scrolling, you might have noticed that the icons extend beyond the frame container. This issue can be easily resolved by selecting the Clip Content option in the right panel. This will restrict the content to scrolling within the frame. Now my horizontal scrolling is working well. When Clip Content is selected, the available area will be restricted to the area of the frame. This can be used when scrolling so that only the content within this area is visible. All right, next let's move on to the vertical scrolling. In this step, we'll introduce an elegant glass effect to your design through vertical scrolling, enhancing its visual appeal. This technique will render your navigation bar transparent while scrolling, infusing your design with dynamic sophistication. To start, create a frame over the screen by pressing the shortcut A and dragging it to match the screen dimensions, which are 393 by 852. Our objective is to enable vertical scrolling within this frame, extending from the bottom to the top edge while remaining positioned behind the status bar. Make sure to bring all the elements inside the new frame in the right position and ensure that all elements are properly placed within the new frame and adjust their positions accordingly. Don't forget to rename this new frame as Scrollable Content to facilitate easy identification and management. Navigate to the Prototype tab, access the Scroll Behavior settings once more, and within the Overflow option, select Vertical to activate the scrolling effect. Let's play the presentation view to test the vertical scrolling. When scrolling, you may notice that all elements move together simultaneously, which isn't our desired outcome. To ensure that the status bar, tab bar, and home indicator remain fixed in place, we need to implement the fixed position feature, effectively creating sticky elements. To implement sticky elements, return to the design panel, select the status bar, home indicator, and tab bar elements. Now, head back to the Prototype panel, specifically within the Scroll Behavior section. Locate the Chevron icon next to the Position option and choose Fixed, Stay in Place. This configuration ensures that these three elements remain stationary and do not move during scrolling. The Fixed Position, this option lets you lock an object's position and make sure it stays in the same location. This makes sure that even as your design scrolls, the object stays in the same place without moving with it, ensuring that they can effortlessly access the content they seek without the risk of getting lost in the scroll. It also means that when you make a fixed object, Figma will move those layers above the other layers in your design on the Layers panel. Let's play the presentation once more to observe the effect. As you scroll through the content, you'll notice that everything moves vertically except the fixed elements and that the status bar remains visible, which might not look very good. To enhance the visual appeal, 
we will enhance our status bar with a captivating glass effect that adds a touch of sophistication to your design. Begin by activating the Rectangle tool using the R key. Create a rectangle of your desired size, ensuring that it slightly exceeds the dimensions of the status bar. Select the status bar and add a frame to it by pressing Option Command G. Rename it as Status Bar. Be certain to drag the rectangle into the status bar frame and position it above the status bar layer. All right, next let's select the rectangle. Apply a linear gradient with a black color scheme. Adjust the opacity to 50% at the top and 0% at the bottom. And then reduce the fill layer opacity to 40%. Introduce the glass effect by applying a background blur effect with a strength of 25. Further, enhance the blur effect with a strength of 25 to the rectangle layer. This will create a seamless and appealing blending effect. Next, go to the Prototype tab and select Vertical for the overflow scrolling. Play the presentation view to test the vertical scrolling and observe the captivating glass effect seamlessly integrating with your content. As you scroll, the glass effect becomes visible through the status bar, enhancing the overall aesthetics. By following these steps, you'll elevate the visual appeal of various design elements such as the navigation bar, status bar, header, and more, resulting in a more dynamic and engaging design. In this section, we'll take a closer look at creating an engaging interaction for the Form button. When tapped, you'll witness a smooth color transition from left to right, featuring a beautiful blue gradient. Additionally, we'll work on the transition for the Stays button, which will enlarge the layout form upon clicking, offering you various options to complete your hosting forms. And lastly, we'll wrap up by creating connections that link all the screens together. Before delving into the transition for the form layout, let's begin by creating the button for the Stay form. As per our usual practice, we'll create a component variant to get started. In the previous course, we developed the design for the Stays page, but we haven't added any components yet. To get started, let's use the first Form button as our initial component and duplicate it anywhere onto the canvas. You'll notice that the design is currently within an auto layout container. To proceed, we need to add a frame where we can place a rectangle shape which will serve as the selected state. To add a frame, begin by selecting the button and then using the keyboard shortcut Option Command G. You can rename the newly created frame as Input or Form Field. Next, activate the Rectangle tool by pressing the R key. Ensure that the rectangle you create matches the dimensions of the Form button, which should be 340 by 60. Ensure that you insert the new rectangle within the form field frame, positioning it above the form layer, then align it to the center. You can also rename the rectangle to Rectangle 1. Now, let's enhance the rectangle's appearance by applying a gradient with two linear colors. Rotate the gradient horizontally. For the left color, use the dropper tool to select a shade of purple with this code. For the right color, opt for a darker purple code. Finally, decrease the layer's fill to 30% opacity. Now let's duplicate the rectangle by using the keyboard shortcut command plus D. Modify the color gradient by selecting a vivid blue shade with this code for the left side with 100% opacity. Then, use the same blue color but reduce the opacity to 0%. Reduce the fill layer opacity to 60%. Next, let's shift rectangle 2 inches to the left, hiding it from view within the frame for now. OK, now select the Form Field frame and adjust the corner radius to 30 to give it a more rounded shape. Afterwards, select Clip Content to conceal any parts of the rectangle that exceed the frame boundaries. Next, let's decrease the opacity of the color style on the symbol, which is originally from SF symbol, to 60% since it's meant to represent the default state. Let's create a component variant and then click on the same icon again to add additional variants. Now, let's make adjustments to the second variant. Set the opacity of the symbol back to 100%. Then, select Rectangle 2 and either slide it back to the center of the frame 
or simply click on the Align Right option for alignment. Now, let's modify the background of the symbol frame. First, remove the fill color and then change the stroke position to center. Adjust the gradient of the stroke and rotate it vertically. Ensure that the left handle aligns with the top gradient color, otherwise the gradient might appear diagonal instead of straight. Occasionally this misalignment can occur when importing design files from another source, but gradients are typically set in a straight line by default. Modify the top color to the This Aqua Blue and set its opacity to 0%. Add a second stop with this blue and set its opacity to 0% as well. Introduce a third stop using this blue code and set its opacity to 0%. Lastly, apply the fourth color, matching it with the first color, and maintain an opacity of 100%. Next, let's incorporate an additional stroke. Increase its opacity to 100% and switch from solid to a linear gradient. Slightly adjust the position of the bottom stop closer to the top. Set the top color to the same aqua blue with a 15% opacity and replace the black color with white, maintaining an opacity of 0%. This adjustment will create transparency at the center of the circle shape. Next, duplicate the stroke using the Command-D keyboard shortcut. Add a fill color and then reduce the opacity to 70%. Transform it into a linear gradient and insert a second stop in the middle. Apply the top color with this color code at 1% opacity. Maintain the second color as the aqua blue with 100% opacity and use the pink for the last color. Hide or remove the stroke and apply a layer blur of 6. This will create a pleasing soft glow effect on the symbol when interacting with the form field. I drew inspiration for this blur effect from the selected state of the tabber to create a similar visual effect. All right, it's time to organize our properties more effectively. Begin by selecting the component container, navigate to the property panel, and rename the property to input form. Now focus on the variants. Keep the default name for the first variant. For the second variant, rename it to selected. Finally, set the opacity of the label to 100%. Now let's dive into the exciting part and add some interactions to the form field. Start by selecting the first variant. In the prototype tab, drag the connection node to the second variant. Set the trigger to on tap with Smart Animate and choose a linear transition with a duration of 300 milliseconds. Next, drag a connection node from variant 2 back to variant 1. This time, select the mouse leave trigger with the same transition settings. To see the action in action, Simply press Shift Space for the shortcut to preview it. When you tap on the form, you'll notice the smooth appearance of the light effect. In the following steps, we'll replace the existing form field with the new component we've just created. To streamline this process, we'll duplicate the form frame and position it next to the design so we can easily copy and paste the symbol and labels. Copy the default variant directly from the component set and use it to replace the old versions of the existing form. Right-click on each form, then select Paste to Replace for all of them. Now, make sure to modify the symbol and label to correspond with the appropriate category. Now let's explore the form transition. When you tap on the Stays menu, you'll notice the form field quietly emerging from the bottom of the menus expanding the layout to provide you with the option to input your stay location information. How can we achieve this effect? It's quite simple. First, duplicate the stays page. We'll focus on the initial screen as we'll be making changes here to establish the transition sequence. Select the form frame and move it upwards until it reaches an X position of 20 and a Y position of 35. Grab the top edge of the frame and pull it down until it has a height dimension of 10, effectively minimizing and hiding the content. Now let's manually edit the shape, but before doing that, create a layout grid to assist with alignment. Click the plus icon next to the layout grid, choose row as the grid type, and set the count to 12. Select the shape layer and access the layers within this union shape by clicking the chevron. Choose the top rectangle, Press Enter to edit it manually, 
Then select the bottom anchor points and move it up until it aligns with the fifth row. Repeat the same process for the mask layer. Lastly, select all the bottom content and move it to the top while maintaining the same spacing as the second screen. Having created interactive components for the menu icons in the previous section, it's time to connect the two screens together seamlessly. Ensure all the icons are set to their default states. Select the Stays icon, navigate to the Prototype panel, and drag the connection node to the second screen. Choose the OnTap trigger, enable Smart Animate, and opt for a gentle transition with a duration of 800 milliseconds. All right, let's quickly review it to see how it appears in action. Use the shortcut shift space to observe the action in the inline view. Let's click on the stays menu and observe how it behaves. Cool, the form smoothly appears when you click on the stays menu and when you tap on one of the form fields, a gentle blue glow light slides to the right, adding a nice touch. While this type of interaction is typically associated with buttons, you can adapt this concept to enhance your button interactions as well. It's a subtle touch that adds elegance to our prototype. Now, let's narrow our focus to these three screens and establish connections between them. We won't be building the entire prototype for every page, just focusing on the essentials. In this section, our primary focus will be on screen navigation using the tabbar. The design for the trip page is already in place. Before we proceed with combining the navigation transitions, let's make some adjustments to both the stays and trips pages. Our goal is to craft a manual push transition effect between these two screens using the smart animate transition. For example, when on the home page, clicking on the second tab in the tabbar, which corresponds to the trip page, will initiate a sliding transition to the right. Typically, in iOS, the default transitions are often push or instant. However, in this scenario, we're opting for Smart Animate to customize our transition animation. Smart Animate effectively matches layers between each frame and animates changes to properties such as position, scale, and color. This choice allows us to visualize the movement as element scale, resulting in a visually appealing effect. All right. Let's begin by duplicating the stays page and positioning it to the right, ensuring a sequential transition when switching content types. To enhance visibility, uncheck the Clip Content option. Select the Segmented Control Section group and slide it to the right to hide the content. Hide the title and drag the subtitle anywhere off screen. Then select all the bottom content and move it downward until it's hidden as well. This step is crucial for creating a gradual blend transition where elements appear one by one. Let's close back the clip content. Moving on to the trip page, hide the status bar, home indicator, and the tab bar. Insert it within the duplicated stays page, ensuring that the trip page frame retains its position as the top layer in the scroll layer section. To avoid any confusion, let's rename this third screen to trips page. To enhance our workflow organization, Let's establish a comprehensive component set for all screens and directly build interactions from this foundation. By doing so, we can streamline our presentation, potentially reducing the number of screens required to just a few or even a single screen. Here, you'll find a collection of screens from our LifeTrip app. We won't be creating animations for each screen individually, but we can establish connections between them to visualize the entire prototype. Rest assured, the complete design is available in the Figma file, which you can explore and follow along with. Let's proceed by selecting all of these screens and creating components set. Let's update the property name to Life Trip and ensure that each screen is appropriately renamed according to its respective category. Rename the component container to Life Trip and update the property names to Screen and ensure that each screen is appropriately renamed according to its respective category. With everything correctly configured, let's now start establishing connections between the first three screens as they are navigated through the tab bar. The remaining screens will involve navigation by tapping on specific buttons. Start with the home page. In the prototype panel, select the second tab and drag the connection node to the third screen. Choose the on tap trigger, enable smart animate, 
and opt for a gentle transition with a duration of 600 milliseconds. Similarly, select the first tab from screen 3 to return to screen 1 using the same interaction settings. Now let's quickly review the prototype. Access to the local component containing the new element we've just created, simply drag the component onto the canvas. Then, navigate to the prototype panel and click the plus icon to initiate the flow point. To view the action, just hit the play button and run the presentation. Great, it seems like everything is working smoothly. Now, let's move forward and connect the remaining screens in a systematic order by their respective categories. To access screen two, we'll initiate this action by tapping on the stays icon. When tapped, the icon will become active and a form field will expand downwards, providing you with the option to input destination information. To achieve this, select the stays icon on screen one then drag the connection node to the second screen. Utilize the on tap trigger, apply smart animate, and choose a gentle transition with a duration of 800 milliseconds. Continuing with screen two, you'll discover a variety of interactive elements, such as the form fields and buttons. This screen hosts numerous connections that lead to different screens or trigger modal pop-ups for specific actions. It's important to mention that I've already established the calendar interaction within the calendar component set. Our next step involves integrating the calendar into screen two to enable a modal transition. Okay, let's begin by copying the default calendar from the component set, paste it inside screen two, ensuring that you position the modal below the status bar and at the top of the remaining content. Then align horizontal center and align bottom. To temporarily hide the modal within the screen area, simply drag it downward. Now click on Add a Variant within the same screen. Once you've created the new variant, bring the modal back by aligning it to the bottom. It will automatically snap into place at the bottom edge of the screen, saving you the need to manually reposition it. Now, let's establish a connection between the date form field and the modal screen. Employ the on tap trigger, Stick with the usual smart animate. Opt for an ease in and out transition with a duration of 300 milliseconds. Also, connect the close button back to the stays page utilizing the same interaction settings. Continuing with the stays section, let's now establish connections for the last two screens concerning room details. Link the search button to the search room page using the on tap trigger and select the action as instant. Next, Select the first card and establish a connection to the room details page using the on tap trigger. This time utilize smart animate to create a scale effect upon tapping. Set the transition to gentle with the default 800 millisecond duration. Gentle will provide a subtle, smooth, and slightly bouncy effect. For this room section, all we need to do is duplicate the screen, expand the card, make necessary adjustments, and reposition the content to the bottom. There you go. Following this, you can customize or add buttons to suit your preferences. I've demonstrated a quick way to create a scaling effect on the card. Following that, connect the back button to return to the search room page with the same interaction details. With that, we have completed the stays interaction section. Let's now preview the entire animation quickly. Let's start with the tab bar. Okay, cool, now let's tap on stays. As for the add location action, I haven't set it up yet, so let's proceed to the calendar field. After that, click on the search button, which will take us to the room section. Everything appears to be functioning smoothly. It's essential to keep in mind that using excessive blur or background effects can potentially slow down your animation. Now it's time to dive into the flight section. Let's tap on the flight icon. I haven't added any interactions to this input field yet, so let's skip directly to the search button, which will navigate us to the flight price section. Now, let's tap on the first price and observe the captivating ticket animation. It generates a subtle folding effect and seamlessly transitions into the details section. Next, it offers us the choice to reveal or conceal the details by simply tapping on the chevron icon. 
Please keep in mind that while we won't be covering the entire animation process for this flight section, I will walk you through the ticket animation at the very least. The flight ticket has already been created in a separate layout, segmented by a separator. So create a component and add a variant. Now make modifications to the second variant. Choose the correct content, which is Info, and flip it by right-clicking, then selecting Flip Horizontal. Afterwards, slide it to the left to merge with the left content, creating a fold that conceals the text content. Next, hide all the text content. Select all the elements and slide them slightly toward the center to allow for some space adjustment when folding the ticket. Now, let's implement the interaction. Connect Variant 1 to Variant 2 using the on-click trigger, employ Smart Animate, and set a slow transition with a duration of 600 milliseconds. And that's about it. Pretty easy, right? Okay, let's take a quick preview of this animation. Great! It appears to be working smoothly. The next steps involve replacing this component into the price tracking design. Just like we did with the room page, you can scale the ticket and add text content accordingly. Feel free to review the design in the Figma file for a more detailed look. Now, let's take a comprehensive look at the entire action to witness how all the prototype components seamlessly merge. Fantastic! We've successfully completed the entire screen interaction. This course has truly been an immersive journey into the captivating realm of interactive design and prototyping. Along the way, we've acquired invaluable techniques for crafting engaging user experiences. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, we're delighted. We look forward to see you soon.